So I got asked a question about influence by, you know, on YouTube, um, who did I study? Well, if you go through all my playlists, you can see there's a list of everybody. Um, I went through all of the videos in order to learn, and this is a number of years ago, uh, probably almost 13 years ago now. So I would pour through this stuff and I started noticing, well, what are the same things? And, and it was simple things like the, you know, every good player had their, their forearm up, their palm up, you know, they're moving the body a certain way and hammering, you know, so I call them fundamentals. And I would just stick with those and practice those. But who really influenced me? Lee Como influenced me. Um, when I first found him, he was saying to hold hard with your, your last fingers of your hand and then swing that way. Well, I got real straight after that. So I followed Lee quite a bit. Um, some pe people would complain that he's, he's too esoteric. He's, he's too hard to understand. But if you go to make a divot and watch even his last, I'd say, five videos, uh, there's no one that knows as much about a golf swing as that man. Um, he's very good as well. I don't believe you should follow anyone if they're not at least scratch. Um, that's because if you're not, you're still searching. And if you're still searching, you'll do what I did. You, you just kind of, you know, I spent a lot of time studying some people. Um, uh, for instance, G Scribbling is wonderful with the graphics. And I don't agree with everything they talk about. You know, I don't agree with having the pro style swing. Um, none of that I found was necessary. Um, all the people studying Hogan, I found out a lot of them uh, really were, were eight handicaps. Well, I wanted to go lower than that. So in my mind, I needed someone who understood what I was going through searching. So Matt Christensen, he teaches pro players down in Texas. I studied him. Um, a lot of just how is he moving and he was about Tai Chi but I didn't agree with his deceleration you know that's to get the flick you slow down and you get the flick out at the end of your hands so I don't really agree with that I agreed more with Lee because when I experimented I found out that accelerating through a strike as fast as I could is really straight and that's what you really find out is that it's you experiment with one thing at a time and find out exactly what works for you. And you, you just go through the steps. Um, I, I know that everybody that is a good player had lag. They had 90 degrees from, you know, from the shaft to their forearms. Okay. So if you read the biokinetic uh, golf blog, that's another one that I spent some, uh, quite a bit of time going through. Um, it really helped me learn. It helped me understand more than learn. I started to figure out, I go, okay, I understand that concept. And as I would experiment with it, I would get better. But I don't agree with this biokinetic grip. They want the two bones to cross over. I get that to do that anyway. So I have little discrepancies with some of those uh, absolutes that they'll give you. Um, I also found out later that it didn't much matter how I gripped a club or anything else. I could still clobber pretty well, but that was through my self-experimentation. Uh, people who, I, who are searching for a golf swing that um, I really enjoyed, McManus Golf. He's very entertaining. Um, do I watch a lot of everyone's videos now? To be honest, I hardly look at YouTube videos for golf. Um, they just don't mean anything to me anymore. Once I found out that there was just, you know, basic things with setup and getting your free, your arms that's from here to here freed up. You know, that's why I did the Tai Chi and stuff, it's swinging your upper arms. You know, and as soon as I found that out and found how to do the body where, you know, you're, you're basically swinging like this. You know, it's the Tai Chi, but you're kind of leaned over this way. You side bend this way and then this way. Now you can see I could do the Tai Chi. Well, this is a swing. There was nothing else more for me 
after that. This is how my body wanted to work and how my arms could swing. See how the upper arm is swinging. So once I did this and this move, you know, some call it skipping a stone. It's really not um, similar in some ways, but it's a baseball swing. And that's what I was all about. And that matched what I knew was baseball. And I could snap my arms through, you know, get my hands moving fast. That was more important than anything. Um, other golf channels uh, on YouTube, uh, there really aren't a lot that understand what they're doing. Even Bradley Hughes was a pro and changed his swing. You can pick up some good clues from Bradley Hughes. Um, but is he the Bible to me? No, no, not at all. Um, out of all of them, as I said, Lee Como really knows the most about it. And uh, if you, re you have to read the descriptions. And you have to go through the process a little bit so that you understand exactly um, what he's talking about. You know, and as far as all the other stuff, um, a lot of it are just my original ideas that I came up with to represent the same five things over and over. And if you watch my videos, you can go into any of the last five and watch them. And you should be able to glean some of the concepts from them. And it's really what I found was important. It was set up and, you know, the way you move to keep that head stable, your A-frame, keep the head stable, move around that. Um, the sternum, you know, moves. It's not a still thing like this. The sternum is going to move around you, so your spine is going to move. Um, we talked about the T1 things, that's from, that's from um, the T1 vertebrae, which Lee doesn't agree with, but that's okay, you know, if you think that this point is what we're revolving around, it is. You see, they move together. So any discrepancies like that, <clears throat> um, you know, you'll run into it and someone will say black and you'll say white and then the confusion starts because of the words. Well, don't worry about the words. I started stripping all that way and saying, well, you know, words are so confusing to everybody, even in lessons that I give now. You can say a word to somebody. I said, well, accelerate. While all of a sudden they're swinging out of their shoes and now they're pulling down from the top again because to, you know, to that person, accelerating is doing this. Well, guess what? All your angle's gone already. In baseball, they call it the box. You can see it here. You keep that box. You keep the box, this angle, you keep it. And then throw it as late as possible while you're just into a pitch. You know, and there's no difference in that to golf. It's just the ball's down on the ground and not moving. So if you go to that front heel line, all that energy is right there. It's when your arm, your left arm has to turn over. It straightens, so you have the straightest point you got this arm just slightly bent. This is perpendicular to your spine. And guess what? When you go back and you do your backswing, guess what else is perpendicular to your spine? It's all about your arm, your upper arm. So it's like that. And this is like this. So they're like that. Just that you have this down. Your arms swing. So you can really, really learn very quickly if you understand what the concepts are. You'll start to hit the same spot on a carpet. I spent months <clears throat> simply closing my eyes and swinging along a carpet like this, where it would you know, show the divot. And you could see that divot. And I got to the point where I can, to this day, I can imagine that carpet and say, hey, this is all you've got to learn is how to make this. And every time, you know, you make that divot. So when Lee says make a divot, he's dead on. Learn how to get your divot. You want your grooves, you know, horizontal, parallel to the ground. And you're going to make a nice flat divot. And it's going to have a bit of a curve at the end of it as you're coming out of that divot. You don't want them gougy, you want them long and flat. You know, my divots are this long and I'm flying 40 yards. 
So once I found all that out, and I'd go out and play, and I just got better. My hand got dropped like crazy. Um, so keep looking at other people's videos. Take them with a grain of salt. They're, everything's not gospel, and you know everyone is slightly different on how they move. When I teach, everyone's got a different issue. But the two main issues are throwing down and twisting like this with the body real hard so that I can feel this up here just pulling. You're throwing this way. You're pulling and twisting and your arms aren't staying back. You know, still loaded. No, I do it very gentle. It's very passive. And then explode for a real short distance. In martial arts, that's what's important. In arts people I put up like uh, Chenga Zangwa. You know, and they're all principles that are common to all sports. Uh, another great one is uh, uh, Vladimir Spigal, okay? He's powerflail.com. Go and, and I got more out of his stuff in, for tennis than any golf teacher ever, ever taught me. Um, he has different ideas and he does little mechanical tools to show you how to, and little mechanical models on how, he, how to show you how you move and how the body moves. You know, very, very interesting stuff as to what's power in comparison to other sports, skating and, you know, baseball, whatever. He's got a whole list of them, shot put. I used to look at track and field um, because I, I enjoyed watching them throw a hammer. And when you look at those principles, you go, oh, well, it's balanced. Their head is not moving around and they're flinging. So then I realized, okay, the golf swing is like a bag of cement. You bring it back and you heave it forward. You bring it back and you heave it forward. Now I learned more about things as I've gotten older. And I've been teaching. I learned even more things on how to explain things. Studied the body. Studied it anatomically. Um, for instance, the foot. If the foot turns out this way, okay, your joints open up in your foot, okay, so that's so that you can form to the ground, so when you turn back, you're formed to the ground. Interesting enough, if you turn your foot the other way, so your ankle's working against it and everything, you're going to push off, because the joints and the bones lock. They get locked in a position so you can really use force off your foot. And really, if you watch me when I throw into that screen with the snap throws, that's what I'm doing. I've got a lot of spring off this foot. Okay? And I stay here, but I'm using that ground to do certain things, to push off to spiral, the knees will spiral. You know, so all of those things, there's just so many details you can get into. But forget the words, don't get lost. Start out with the basics, get your launches right. That's another principle. Everybody flies a ball too high because they let it go early and they're just flipping in a ball. They say, I'm a flipper, I'm a flipper. You know, they, they always say about that about me on forums and stuff like that. I'm not. I've got the ball gone, and then I'm accelerating through. We call it a push slap release. That's what I'm doing. That's what Lee does. It's the easiest way to hit a ball and hit it with authority. And if you're accelerating through strikes, it's going straight. You're not going to be curving it all over in hooks and slices. I have a tough time watching the PGA because of that. Their balls curve so much. You know, it's just crazy. Um, they did one of those uh, top golf graphics in the last tournament in Phoenix. And you saw, you know, a hundred different trails of the golf ball going down the last fairway. And it's just, it's insane. I mean, you say, oh, well, there's a lot of ways to do it. Well, yeah, there is. Well, why not just hit straight? That's what no Norman used to talk about. Well, I just, I just play through a straight part of the course. And for us as amateurs, you know, that's what's important. 
Uh, the rest isn't. It just doesn't matter. Learn to hit it straight uh, by hitting the center at club face. You get set up right and you reach out for a ball, you'll start hitting the center instead of the heel, the toe, and everything else. So anyway, yeah, I just wanted to tell you um, where I got some of this uh, knowledge um, and who I really look at now, and it's very few. Uh, so I'll still continue putting up some more videos. Um, I'll probably put up some lessons coming up. I haven't put up any lessons in a while. And um, I get pretty busy during the winter with lessons indoors. So thanks a lot for following the channel. Keep watching the, you know, keep subscribing and watching the advertising. It's important. It keeps this going and uh, we'll continue to learn. Hopefully in the spring, I'm still doing rehab on my arm, but it's getting better. You can see I can lift it now. You know, that's a good thing. Um, so I'm going to try and get, uh, we have a couple more months till we start playing, maybe three more, four more months. And uh, we'll give it a, a shot. And I'll show you with some more, um, I have some more camera setups and things like that that we'll be able to show on course stuff easier. Well, thanks. It's been an interesting time doing this channel. And I've met a lot of great people. I didn't want to miss anybody. Um, so one person I didn't men mention was Count Yogi. Uh, he influenced me. Um, simple setups, one, two, three, four, five. And that's the whole swing, you just step in, two, three, four, five. And you get that routine. Um, it was too simplistic. Uh, I didn't like the way he was holding the club and stuff like that. Um, I say he talked in Hogan, but um, I could get very well and hit pretty far with it, but I used to pull and I needed to know more and it had to move more like I moved. Um, so that's a big one. There's one called Horizon Golf. Uh, flow Golf is excellent. Um, turn the sound up or put the uh, captions on for English. Flow Golf is really good. Um, there's a gentleman, um, Gary Edwin. Uh, you can learn a lot from Gary Edwin's. Uh, George Gankis is good. I used to follow him on Instagram, but his move was too difficult for me. Um, I don't totally agree with the way he waves the club around and stuff like that as well. I found that didn't work for me. I tried it, I'd do well for a little while and then it go away. And maybe I wasn't doing the moves right. I had never taken a lesson from him. Um, but he's he's got uh, he's proven that he's done a lot of good players and he's a baseball swing, as in, as is Ben Hogan, as is Lee Como to me is baseball swing, uh, and and that's what I I liked you know that's what worked for me. So I ran golf channel, I don't agree with the things he says, um, uh, not all of it, uh, but oh some of the the I love his graphics and the way the illustrations are. I wish I could, um, I'm in the process of learning the After Effects now so that I can represent it, uh, some of my thoughts the same way that he does. Uh, he thinks out of the box, he hates my swing. Um, actually asked me not to teach it at one time, um, but you know, I, how many instructors get everybody to teach four yards? Or I get so many people back telling me how, how well they do and it's only after a couple hours at the most of lessons it's not ongoing once you understand you know exactly what the, the swing is and can feel it that's that's when it becomes important power flail I told you about Vish, the great job Vish Bigal. it's Vladimir Spigal it's just wonderful uh, Robin Matthews is interesting uh, he came out and had kind of a flash. Uh, and I, I've used that drill for years, steering ahead and swing. It really helps. Gets you gets your balance right. It gets you to feel things instead of just swinging away. What I neglected to mention was uh, Joey Myers' um, baseball. And I do look at some of the baseball videos um, from different players. You can go through my playlist for that. But um, Joey Myers with the anatomy, you know, he teaches the anatomy trains as does um, uh, Lee Como. 
and it's Thomas Meyer. Uh, Thomas Meyer is the one who wrote the book Anatomy Trains. So they're defining a different way of how things work with your lines. You, you know, it's not X factor silly stuff. It's it actually makes sense in how your body moves. It has to do with the myofascia wraps and you know spiral lines and and all sorts of front lines, back lines, and it defines how you move. Um, it's another way of teaching to show somebody how they're not moving correctly, or how to move better. Is is really what it's all about. And that's what I'm doing. I'm teaching people how to move better, um, to use that tool right, and uh, how to move where you're never hurt. I mean, you know, you're never gonna hurt if you're doing this. You get some momentum going and you can really pick up some steam. Combine that with a little bit of flick, flick um, and how to move leveraging to a swing. So I talk about the way a spine moves and, you know, the way you can use your joints for extra leverage. You know, that's why I talk about pushing on the kitchen counter. You can actually feel the swing. Get your hip and pelvis a little bit open and push. And you feel it in your feet. You're rooted. And your head doesn't move. See, pushing the counter. It's all the same moves. You get a little side bend. A number of years ago, there was a woman here that taught in Chicago. Uh, I don't remember her name. She was a doctor. Uh, she had studied sports medicine. And she developed a swing that was called a simple swing. And it's not the simple swing you see where they roll back way in this way. It's not that swing where they hold the club and you do the dance. Although there's a lot of validity to that swing. It was... Um, where you would side bend and you already have the side bend and now you're like a door opening and closing and doing this. That's a very good swing. The first time I tried that, I hit a ball 285. And at that time I wasn't getting a ball 250. And just that simple motion and setup. But what I found out was that she really wasn't a good golfer and um, you know, that didn't interest me as much. And I couldn't keep repeating this swing. I don't know why. I think now if I went back to that, set up that way and swung around, I think now I could, I could do this swing quite well. So I may fool around that with that in one of the videos and, and show her, show you what she was about. Um, but it was interesting. Uh, not real hard, simple stuff, you know. I also didn't agree with their grip. A lot of times they go with the kinetic grip and that means you're, you're pulling over this way to get your, your radial bones. You get a crisscross for strength. Well, you're gonna do that anyway in my swing. It has to, if I'm swinging a hammer, it's gonna do it anyway. You know, that's so, make things automatic. The game becomes a lot easier. You quit worrying about all the all the nonsense as long as you can keep you know head still you know not bobbing up and down and going around uh, then you can hit the same low spot which is going to be your hands just out in front of your front heel like like that you can pretty much do anything then you can go this way you can go this way my favorite is to loop in and loop out loop in and loop out you know you can really snap your arms Take a wet towel and learn how to snap it. Okay, that's all I've got for today.